Hey everyone, it's Paul from One Cast, One Fish, and today we're going to be talking about how I added a dedicated battery to power the electronics in my boat. Specifically, four Garmin Echo Map 106 Ultras, the Garmin GLS 10 Black Box, powering the LVS 34 Live Scope. Now, I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of controversy with this video because for some reason, whenever you start talking about wiring up electronics and the Garmin Live Scope, suddenly every bass fisherman in the world becomes a full fledged electrical engineer and expert. I'm simply going to be showing you a simple and effective way that I set up my dedicated power source for my electronics. And this setup's allowed me to stay on the water all day long. And most importantly, I get a good clear image on the Garmin Live Scope. Is this setup perfect? Well, probably not, but it's worked for me. Now, before we get started, I'm gonna leave you with one final piece of advice. And it's probably the most important piece of advice I can give you. That's use quality marine grade components in your installation. That means be sure that you're using that marine grade tinned wire. You're taking your time and getting good solid crimson connections. And most importantly, take your time to plan out and even draw out the system that you wanna install in your boat. A little bit of prior proper planning goes a long way. And let's face it, there's no increase in wire size or number of ferrite beads that's gonna help you overcome a crappy installation job. Powering my system, I have an Interstate Group 31 Marine Deep Cycle Battery that's rated at 98 amp hours. And if you're using a lead acid battery such as this, I recommend nothing less in size. Now you're probably wondering, why don't I have a lithium battery to power my electronics? Well, the answer is actually pretty simple. You see, I replaced all the batteries on my boat about two years ago, and the set has been getting the job done so far. So I really don't see a reason to switch at the moment. Will I eventually go lithium? Sure, probably next go around, but that's gonna entail getting four new batteries and a new charging system for the boat. So we'll cross that bridge when the time comes. Now I needed a switch and breaker for isolating the power and protecting the circuits in this system. So I used the Blue Sea Systems 7140, a 187 series circuit breaker. It's rated at 60 amps and it's a breaker that combines both switching and circuit protection in one package, eliminating the need for extra components like an external switch. I also added the Blue Sea System 5025ST, which is a six circuit fuse block that provides a landing point for both our positive and neutral leads for all of our electronics. Now with the major components of the system identified, it's time to start talking about wiring and connectors. But before we get started, I wanna be sure that our circuit breaker is in the off position and that our fuses are removed from our fuse block. And we'll also not be connecting any wires to our battery until we're complete. Let's start with some basics for our wiring and connectors. First, always ensure that you use marine grade tinned wire along with marine grade lugs and connectors. And don't forget to have that shrink tubing on hand to properly seal and protect all of your connections. Here's a real quick pro tip. Always slide your heat shrink tubing on prior to crimping your connector. And that's because if you already have that connector crimped on and you try to slide the heat shrink tubing over, you're probably gonna run into an issue. First, we're gonna be completing our main power circuit between our battery, breaker, and power distribution fuse panel. We're gonna start by making our positive lead that's gonna go from our battery to our circuit breaker. In my case, I used red number six marine tinned wire and two number six 516 tinned lugs. Simply make your lead long enough to go from your battery to the location of your circuit breaker and don't forget your heat shrink tubing. Next, we'll be making our positive lead from our circuit breaker to our power distribution fuse block. Again, this is gonna be red number six wire, but this time we're gonna be using one number six 516 tin lug and one number six number 10 tin lug. Again, we're gonna cut the wire lead to your desired size for your system. And don't forget to seal and protect your crimps with that heat shrink tubing. Now we're gonna be making our neutral lead from our battery to our power distribution fuse block. For this, I use black number six wire and our connectors are gonna be one number six 516 tin lug and one number six number 10 tin lug. Again, be sure to cut the wire to desired length for your system 
And I'll say it again, don't forget the heat shrink tubing. That'll complete the main power circuits for our installation. Now it's time to focus on the branch circuits that are gonna power our live scope and all of our fish finders. Let's start by looking at what's needed to hook up our first Garmin Echo Map 106 Ultra. We're gonna need our Echo Map 106 Ultra cradle and power cable along with our fuse panel. The Echo Map 106 Ultra power cable is six feet long. And if your distribution panel and the Echo Map cradle is less than six feet apart, then you can connect the power cable leads directly to the fuse panel using a 16 to 14 number eight ring terminal. Be sure that the positive lead though is connected to the positive connection point on the fuse block and that the neutral is connected to the neutral connection point. But in many cases, six feet won't be enough. So as in my case, we must extend the power cable leads. For this, I decided to go with number 10 tinned wire for all my extensions. You'll also need some 16 to 10 butt connectors. And in my case, the butt connectors I chose to use already had a protective shrink coating over them, which will help simplify things down the line. Since the Echo Map 106 Ultra power cable leads are number 16 wire, we're gonna wanna crimp our number 16 side of our butt connector to the positive and negative lead of our power cable. Next, we're gonna simply add our required length of number 10 wire and crimp one end to the number 10 wire side of the butt connector. Again, red wire for positive and black wire for our negative. And to finish off these lead extensions, we're gonna use a 12 to 10 number eight ring connector and some heat shrink tubing. Now to complete our first Echo Map 106 Ultra branch circuit, simply connect the positive lead to the distribution fuse panel and then the negative lead. With our first Echo Map 106 Ultra power branch circuit complete, we're gonna do the exact same thing for our remaining fish finders, which in my case, is gonna be three more times. Now we're gonna look at our branch power circuit for our Garmin LiveScope GLS-10 black box. The GLS-10 power cable leads are number 14 wire, and the power cable overall is only six feet in length. Again, if your black box is mounted within six feet of the fuse block, then you can connect the power cable leads directly to your fuse panel with a 16 to 14 number eight ring terminal. Being sure that the positive lead is connected to the positive connection point on the fuse block and that the neutral is connected to the neutral connection point. But in many cases, six feet won't be enough. So in my case, we had to extend the power cable leads. The installation instructions from Garmin lay out the recommended wire sizes based on length of the extensions needed. In my case, it was less than 15 feet so I continue to use the number 10 wire for my extensions. You're also gonna need some more of those 16 to 10 butt connectors. Since the GLS-10 black box power cable leads are number 14 wire, we're gonna wanna crimp our number 16 wire side of our butt connector to the positive and negative leads of our power cable. Next, add the required length of number 10 wire and crimp one end to the number 10 wire side of the butt connector. Again, red wire for positive, and the black wires are negative, where we're also gonna crimp our butt connector. We're gonna finish off our lead extensions with a 12 to 10 number eight ring connector and some heat shrink tubing. Now to complete our Garmin LiveScope GLS-10 black box branch circuit, simply connect the positive lead to the distribution fuse panel, then the negative lead. It's at this time that you can add the fuses back to your fuse panel. Attach the positive lead and then the negative lead back to your battery. And once you're ready to energize your system, simply switch your main circuit breaker to the on position. Now it's a good time to check and make sure that all of your electronics are powered and working properly. Now, once you've verified all your fish finders and electronics are working properly, be sure to turn all your fish finders off and simply switch your circuit breaker to the off position, which will remove all power to all of your electronics. And this is important to do because even when turned off, the GLS-10 black box tends to draw a little bit of power. Setting up a dedicated power system for your boat electronics doesn't have to be difficult or complicated. Take the time to draw out and plan your system, use quality components, and above all, take the time to do the job right. Now I'm sure there's bound to be some questions, so be sure to ask down in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time on the water.